So I've been seeing a lot of people in the comments of my channel still thinking that college holds some sort of promise for helping them in their careers or in their life or whatnot. And I dis for 90% of people, I actually disagree. And I'm going to talk about there's only three majors which you should be going to college for. And if you're not one of these three majors, if you're part of the other 95% of the population in the world, you do not need to go to college. And I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story. This is a little bit of a rant almost of my experience. I'm 31 years old. I'll tell you my experience of what happened when I graduated college with a good degree. Stay tuned. Hey, so I'm John, and if you haven't heard about me before, I teach other people to start their online businesses. And I've been doing YouTube for a number of years now, and I continually see in the comments of my channel people still believing that the college is a way to make money. And I absolutely disagree, and I this, is, this video is a little different from what I usually make, um, because I actually just want to talk to talk to you and explain what college is really useful for and who should be going to college and who should not be because most people should not be going to college and I actually I'd love to hear from you if you could comment in the comments below how old are you let me know in the comments below are you you know 16 17 and are you in college or are you considering going to college because I'd really like to understand where your head's at is, you know, if you're 16 and you're saying, I'm going to college, let me know. To start off with, let me start with kind of my background is I, I graduated college in 2010 and I graduated college with a marketing degree. I went to California State University of Northridge and while I had, you know, I, I had an all right time in college. I did a lot of, you know, I, I had seven internships. I was working the whole time through college. I had seven internships by the time I graduated college. You know, I was in a fraternity and all that stuff. I had a lot of fun. But college does not help or did not help me in my marketing career. Everything I learned about marketing and sales and negotiation and management, it all came from personal experience either in my job or working for myself. And most of it came working for myself and one particular boss that I had. What's really baffling to me is all of my friends who graduated college, you know, they graduate around the same year as I did, 2010. And very, very, very few of them ever ended up in a career that they majored in or did they get a job because of whatever they majored in. You know, all my friends who got good jobs ended up getting them because of personal connections and it, it had nothing to do with their major. It had nothing to do with the fact that they graduated college. Uh, it had everything to do with that this was something they pursued you know, on the side or, you know, they were already, you know, they were running a, you know, my friend Will, for instance, you know, he was, he was creating, you know, he actually, I think he may have dropped out of college. He was creating games just for funny on a site called newgrounds.com. And he was able to get a really good job working for a, an, an amazing video game company because he was just creating games for fun. And he showed that company, he said, oh, here's a little game I created on, on Flash. And they were like, whoa, this is cool, this is original, this is creative, this is fun. And they gave him a job. You know, my friend Arturo, he got a job because he, you know, he was interested in Facebook ads and he was running, you know, he was checking out and learning Facebook advertising on the side and it had nothing to do with the major he had in college. And those are my two friends with good jobs. My friends who are the most successful are all entrepreneurs. You know, they're making seven figures or eight figures a year. So maybe I'm crazy and maybe I'm biased and maybe my experience has no representation of what the reality of the situation is. But I believe the whole college system is messed up. I believe our education system is messed up and we have to, the prices are going up. The only industry in the world right now that where the prices go up every year and the service gets less efficient is education. You know, this, this TV, this TV gets cheaper every single year to buy a 32 inch TV. Now, 
the three majors that you absolutely should be going to college for, there's three of them, and only 5% of, this only applies to 5% of the population of college students, is law. If you're going to be a lawyer or something, you need to have a law degree. That's obvious. If you're going into medical or becoming a doctor, again, you become a dentist or a doctor, you need a medical degree. You need that foundation. You're dealing with people's lives here. And the third one is engineering. You know, engineering, again, you're dealing with people's lives. When you construct buildings, you're do dealing with big things. And when, a when you're a junior engineer or whatever, you're not really constructing building. You're working for somebody else and everything's checked anyways. But the point being, you know, in other countries, you hear about buildings collapsing and killing tons of people. And you don't want that to happen. But those are the only three careers where you need to go to college. Everything else, business, or I, even some colleges are offering today entrepreneurship degrees. I mean, isn't that an oxymoron? If you are going to college for an entrepreneurship degree, it doesn't make sense. Entrepreneurship by its nature is actually just doing it. It's, it's uh, Entrepreneurship is not, has nothing to do with, you know, taking tests or following the rules or, or you know, you know, I don't know, getting A's. There's no correlation between that. In fact, most of the successful entrepreneurs are like bad, are actually bad in school. You know, I was, I was never a good student. I was, I, I'm smart. I think I'm smart, but I was always a C student. And the fact of the matter is your grades do not tell if you're going to be a good entrepreneur. In fact, entrepreneurs, to be a good entrepreneur, as this is a quote from Arnold Schwarzenegger, don't break the law. Good entrepreneurs break the rules. You know, you should never break the law. You can go to jail for that, but you break the rules. People who do well in school are good at following rules, okay? Entrepreneurs, by nature, are not rule followers. We are creating our own businesses. We are not fitting into another person's box. So there's no reason why, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you should go to college. Okay, and please, if you haven't responded before, for, first off, if you want to learn how to be an entrepreneur, if you enjoy this content, this is a rant, this is not my usual content, please click subscribe to my channel, enable the notification bell, click a like or whatever, and if you haven't commented and let me know, how old are you and are you thinking of going to college or not? Let me know, I'd, I'd love to hear. Or if you went to college, what was your experience? Did it help you? Did it not help you? Write in the comments. I really want to hear about your experience and see what others have experienced with this same subject. Now, what I find really interesting about the education system, and I've actually studied this because I'm a teacher myself. And between you and me, you know, I, I, I teach on YouTube, as you see, you know, and I, I teach, you know, I teach on Facebook and I teach other ways. And, you know, I make over a million dollars a year and I, I actually love teaching, but I believe that teaching in colleges is so government controlled these days. It's such a rigid curriculum and the world is changing so fast that it absolutely doesn't make sense. Teachers I was learning from were not successful and I was going to a business school, okay? Why am I learning business from teachers who are not successful? And this was actually uh, uh, the story of my best friend. His name's Carlos. Actually, he has a YouTube channel. Maybe I'll have my editor's link at Carlos Cruz. He doesn't really post, but he has a few videos. And he was in Guatemala, okay? He, that's, that's where he's from. And he was going to college. And he, he was running an online business while he was going to college. And he was sitting in class one day and out the window. He was just kind of daydreaming because he found class really boring. He was 18 years old at the time and the teacher's parking lot was off to his left. It was out the window to his left. And same thing. He was going to college for business and he was looking out the window and he was looking at all of the teacher's cars and he's looking at them and he was taking account of what types of cars were teachers who were teaching in business how to be successful were driving. Honda, Toyota, Subaru, Subaru, Toyota, Toyota. And he thought to himself, why am I learning business from a teacher who is driving a Subaru? Think about it, right? Why 
are you learning business from somebody who's driving a Subaru? And they're not driving a Subaru by choice. They're driving a Subaru because they can't afford a BMW or a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or whatever that is. It doesn't make sense. And what he did, what Carlos did was that day, he actually just got up in the middle of class. He said, screw this. He got up in the middle of class and he just left. And he quit college that day, just in the middle of class. I mean, Carlos, Carlos is a, a, you know, a big business person now. He runs an eight figure business out here in LA. He's my best friend. We have a lot of fun, but he took a path less taken. And, you know, it takes a lot of self, self-confidence to be an entrepreneur. I'm not suggesting it for everyone. But the point being is so many students are told to learn business. You need to learn from these teachers who don't have much success in business themselves. And it just doesn't make sense. And it doesn't make sense in a lot of ways. You know, if you want to learn these professions, if you want to learn art, go be an apprentice for an artist. Work for them for free. Just say, hey, can you pay for you know, clothing and could I camp in your backyard, whatever, you know, but learn from somebody who's doing it, who's on the front lines every single day. That's how I learned. That's how all of my successful friends learn. I surround myself with a very high net worth of people and they all had some sort of mentor. They learned from somebody successful. They didn't learn it in school. And I've done a lot of research on this, right? I gave a talk at Burning Man last year because about the history of education, the history of education, how our education system came to be. Have you ever wondered what the history of education is? Have you ever wondered if people 150 years ago all went to school or university or elementary school? They didn't. 200 years ago? People didn't go to school. People weren't required to go to school. The whole concept of mandatory or what's called compulsory schooling in this society, in the world, is actually a very new concept. And it came about about 150 years ago. Now, I'm going to go a little bit off on a little bit of a tangent. For those of you who don't want to go into the history of education system, but you enjoyed this, this, this talk so far, please subscribe, like, and check out some of my entrepreneurship content. I hope to motivate you to become, you know, to work for yourself, to follow the path of freedom. But for those of you who are actually interested in kind of the history of what I might call brainwashing or manipulation, stick around because I'm going to give you a little bit of the insight into the research I've done into this really messed up, I'd I'd use a bad word here, but YouTube wouldn't want me to, really messed up system that has taken away original thought and creativity in our society. And there's an agenda, but I won't go into conspiracy theories here. I'll just talk about facts. Now, the facts are that really the only, you know, the main way of schooling, universities came about a thousand years ago, okay? Each society around Europe, you know, in Spain, I believe it was, you know, Barcelona or sorry, Madrid. In England, it was Cambridge. In France, it was Paris. In in Germany, it was Cologne. In Italy, it was, I forget the city, but it was one of them. Each of the countries, each of the major language areas had a city where the upper middle class or the upper class would send their youth. They'd give them some money, a couple, you know, 20, 30,000 bucks. They'd say, go find a teacher and learn. Okay. Learn weights and measurements or learn to be a priest or learn to be a shipbuilder, whatever it is, you know, go to learn to be a merchant, whatever it was, you know, a bricklayer, stonemason. They'd send their kids out to learn from teachers, sort of like we do today, right? send a kid off to college, learn a skill. But in those days that you would actually learn a trade and you'd go into the actual trade or you'd apprentice for somebody in a trade. It was more kind of less theoretical and more action-based, right? But it was never compulsory. Schooling, elementary school, grammar school, preschool, all of these things, those weren't around. You didn't have those. 
So what made the change to where everybody is required to sit in neat little rows of desks, learn the same top-down dictated versions of history and English language and sociology, anthropology, everything, right? Where was that change made where that became normal? Now, this is the messed up thing. It actually came from the Prussians who became the Nazis. Our school system came from Nazis. And how it came about was actually in the 18, middle 1800s after the, French, after the French defeated the Germans or the Prussians in a war. And this is all history and you can look this all up. After the Germans lost the war to the French, the, the Germans vowed never to lose another war again. They said, we will not be beaten in a war against the French. And because the French were the most powerful country at the time in Europe. But what the Germans did was they, they chalked up their loss to the fact that all of these different little factions, these kingdoms in Germany, they weren't working well together. They weren't communicating well together because they all spoke slightly different dialects of German and they all had different histories and they all had different allegiances. They all had different things they cared about. They were loyal to their region, not to the overall country. And what they instituted was a mandatory or compulsory schooling across all of the German territories to essentially brainwash, or sorry, I shouldn't use the word brainwash, to educate everyone on the same version of history in the same dialect of German, on the same sociology, and give everyone the same singular identity and obedience to the capital rather than obedience to their state. And what ended up happening was you got, you got some good things and bad things. You got, on one hand, you got the most educated, the most scientifically advanced country in the entire world. The Germans invented the Germans invented rockets, the Germans invented air conditioning, the Germans invented submarines, the Germans invented, you know, the, the you know, all these, you know, jet engines. The Germans invented all of these amazing, you know, they they became the most powerful nation in the world. And they took over almost all of Europe because they were the most technologically advanced, but they didn't think for themselves. And they killed, not all the Germans were evil, but they killed without question, you know, the Jewish genocide, etc. And you got a population of people who were very smart, but could not think for themselves. And we, the America, took the same model of education. I forget the exact name of the person, but they sent a delegation over to Germany around the 20s or 1910s. We took the same model of education to unify our disparate states because we had the same issue. We had lots of different states with lots of different dialects of English or languages or religions. And we took the same concept that the Germans took and implemented it ourselves to create a unified United States that had a singular identity a singular history and a singular allegiance, an identity as Americans. Now, why do I tell you this? I tell you this because I want you to think for yourself. I tell you this because I want you to question what you're being taught. I'm telling you this because I've continually questioned what is real throughout my life. Now, I'm not going to go into my crazier conspiracy theories, but the fact of the matter is, education is not built to help you think for yourself. The only person who can help you think for yourself is you. So understanding the history of education, don't buy into this system hook, line, and sinker. It has its uses. Learning is something that has been around since the dawn of time, and it's a very useful thing. Continual learning is definitely the path to success. But if you don't question the reason why you're doing something, and I see so many college students, I see so many young people going to college completely blind simply because they are directionless 
confused and they don't know what they want to do, that I think it's a major moral failing of our society. And I believe something needs to be done about it. And hopefully this video reaches a few of you. Now, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. Am I crazy? Am I totally nuts? You know, or, or is there some truth to this? So let me know in the comments. Let me know why. If you think I'm totally nuts, let me know in the comments, but tell me why. Or if you think uh, there's, there's some truth to it, let me know. But talk to you soon. Make sure if you, if you like this video, share it with others because I believe others need to hear about this content. Share this video with as many people as you can or on your Facebook if it helps, if you believe it will help somebody else. Talk soon. Thanks for watching.